Good morning. So before proceeding to my talk, I would like to thank organizers for inviting me. And my talk will be devoted to, to material solution technology, but in fact is a data and activities we're doing uh, in a recent two or three years. And uh, before proceeding, I would like to thank uh, many people which contributed to this. And first of all, my team uh, in, in Center for Physical Science and Technology, Irmantas Kašalinas Darius, Sarita Rimvidas Svenskevičius, Lina Svenskevičius, Vincas Tomošiūnas, Bogdano Vaisat and Gediminas Rachukaitis. Also, uh, Frankfurt team, uh, Frankfurt are mine team, uh, which is my Humboldt hosting organization and Professor Hartmut Roskos groups, Maris Bauer, Sebastian Boppel, Martin Mant, Alvidas Lesnaus, and Victor Kreutzer. And, and as also, finally, we have had nice cooperation with Ljubljana, Professor Jana Strontel group, Alexander Sesek, and Andrzej Schwiegel. And also, financial support, which is essential also, is uh, coming from Research Council of Lithuania and Alexander von Humboldt Stichtung from Germany. So, in fact, why terahertz it was so important? So, before proceeding to why are doing this? Terahertz is very specific scale. If you look at the scale, first it's, it's electronics from, from the left. And, in it, and another one is lasers. It means photonic style of operation. It means we have something like gap here because from one side, classical uh, transport phenomena ends to these numbers because electrons cannot go faster than 10 to 7 centimeters per second. It means there is no chance to exceed this. It means we have no chances to uh, increase our operation speed. And if we look at this uh, particular number, which is very important for terahertz, 300K, it's room temperature, it's 25 MeV. It's one of the reference numbers for this talk. If we look from the uh, quantum mechanical, it means uh, one terahertz corresponds to 4.1 MeV. It's very, very low splitting in, in case of quantum mechanics. It means if we have two levels, I'll try to organize transition between them, and as a rule, lines are usually splitted, it means I have no chance to organize life and um, population inversion. It makes my life difficult in, in, organizing, to co in organizing coherent sources in, in terahertz range. So in fact, how to do it? And so we have implied tricky things somehow. So, so there is two approaches. The first one is called optoelectronics terahertz. I will say only some words about that. And my love is solid state based terahertz sources and approaches. Everyone, everything which is going to we'll speak about mainly room temperature operation. That is why it's 425 MeV, and that is why 4.1 is so important to, to recall during this, my presentation. So, application areas, why? In fact, the security systems, and here as you see Nagoya group data, in fact, there's cocaine and sucrose hidden in some luggages. It means I can make colors, photo, photos, and to see different shadows saying that it's dangerous material or not. If you look here, it's drugs, you know, and terror spectroscopy is an important tool saying how many lines we have here. And if you look, it's, it's the contents in the percentage scale and different structure. It means all, all of this technological stuff which made for this dangerous stuff uh, has spectral signature. It means I can distinguish them even to record the track which you're coming from. So it's direct applications for, uh, for, for securities. And finally, it's uh, explosives. It's uh, some, I would say, dielectric materials or plastic materials. It's nice paper from Chinese group saying that terahertz has important RDX. It's one of the most uh, uh, dangerous explosives. They have signatures in this range. And if you look at the lines here and the lines here, it means if I'm able to record this, I can identify explosives. What is important, numbers here is two terahertz. It means one, from one for two terahertz, it's very good line because there is no specific requirements for, for, for antennas and so on and so on. It means I was still in reasonable numbers to produce something very effective without huge increase in technology and without reach, a huge increase in, in, in designs. So, so my contents will be following. We'll speak about compact solutions because femtoseconds lasers usually for optoelectronics is a huge one, extremely expensive. 
The ones on one will speak about spectroscopic imaging, will try to reduce the price and to try to tricky things to make something very different, avoiding spectral measurements, which is, if you, you can imagine, you have closing, if I put something below, it means for I have had very strong scattering, which disturbs my spectra, it means quality and identification will be very, very hard. And finally, deeper up apart and calling uh, with titanium microbolometer, saying how we can record very weak, even very weak uh, electronic emission in room temperature using specific kind of microbolometers. It's very recent data, allowing that even no additional optics will be needed. So, but intra, optoelectronic terahertz, and why so not so convenient? In fact, classical steps, it's, it's old stuff. It's, it's, it's slide taken from Aruna Skrotkus group. And the main point is that, in fact, we need two lasers. Uh, in fact, Fantasaco laser, we have delay line, and it, one of the beams just accelerate, uh, excite, emitter, and then as always, uh, like uh, scanning, micro, uh, scanning oscilloscope probes the field. It means I have transient here, and, and this one is a result of experiment. Then I'm making a Fourier spectrum. Uh, Fourier uh, and spectrum, I see something like a signal versus frequency, saying that how much I have frequencies in this transient. Important numbers here is this scale. It means it's normalized to one. It means I should have at least six orders of magnitude ratio between signal to noise. It means noise flow is a background. What we have here is in the emission in the one microwatt. It's very big in terahertz scale. And as a one, what we need is uh, room temperature operation. And most important, you see something about four terahertz. Still below, so it's far away from two terahertz. It means all possible uh, needed signatures I can find using the system. So process is behind how it works. You know, if I'm from the second leader comes here, I have an uh, electron hole here. I have a, and if I have a field, electrons and holes are accelerated. You know, classical physics, if electron ex runs quickly with, ex with acceleration, it emits something. <laughs> it, Happy, uh, it's, it's a good thing that, in fact, we have terahertz broadband, terahertz pulse. What we need for that, we need good mobility and short lifetimes. If we have long lifetimes, everywhere, everything will be screened, and we have no field inside. That is bad. It means, from material point of view, we need just two very controversial things to be confined in this. One short lifetime and highest possible mobility. That is why low temperature galumas night one of the best options in this field. And so, and then if we go to, to recording system, terahertz goes here, just opposite effect, terahertz excites photocurrent, and we go into lock-in amplifier, and, and we have uh, the transient we have shown in the previous slide. How much numbers we have and how big it should be, it means we have short carrier lifetimes, one picosecond, it's the biggest one, we need much less. I mean, 2,000, 200 femtoseconds, it's reasonable numbers. Uh, uh, mobility, it lo it, for instance, bismuth type materials have 2,000 square centimeters squared per volt per second. It's big numbers, while LT gallium mass is 500 um, um, squared centimeters per volt per second. For gallium mass it's usually 7,000, just numbers for comparison. It means we are sacrificing mobility instead of to have very short lifetime. That's the style of operation. And, 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 and uh, why we it's important? Martin Nuss and a group in Bell Labs 1995 recorded first images uh, saying that the terahertz are, can be very important in identification and materials identification. They used conventional femtosecond laser as, as we showed in previous. It was old stuff till the time sapphire laser. Still iron ion pump. Now we have totally, <laughs> totally different generation of lasers. And they used, you know, it's, it's just showing this, how big is the numbers. If you look, you should look at this one. It's pico amps. It's difficult to measure. And finally, what they have recorded is, 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 is a chip. Is they were able to see the first uh, chip. And it, it called this, 
I can see through the walls. It means here is a plastic chip and all wires which is inside. It's first image recorded ever. Then Zhang group recorded strange things. They took this leaf, what was fresh, it's full of water. Then after two days, it's, but it, 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 water contents has changed. It means I have more transparent. And here is the ticket bacon. It was idea probably targets can serve as a tool to identify how good or how bad is the food. So in fact, nothing happened up to now. But this one is very important. I will say you later why. So it was beginning of terahertz imaging, and it is why they got some acceleration, in particular after terrible event in New York in 2001. It, because explosives are plastic, and we try to find a tool to identify what is hidden, what is far away from any metallic things. So comparison now, evolution. Uh, it's tardant, you know, I'm showing the uh, photos. It's femtosecond lasers, it has a huge one. And here is Terrell produced one. They're using fiber lasers of, uh, and they're using, you know, laser which is different wavelengths. It means they use another, another material just to have band, band, band to, uh, uh, to excite care, uh, whole, uh, electron hole periods. So what we have here is components become smaller and smaller, and one of the ways to go further in making system very compact, place somewhere on the table, or go to the customer to place it and used for every, every, uh, every, every life, um, uh, every, every day's life needs. What is important is this stuff for gallium arsenide, titan sapphire, if you recall, 800 nanometers. It means gallium arsenide is just needed material. If we change the wavelengths, we should align material itself because we have bad excitation or not effective excitation of optical, of, of, uh, of, uh, of carrier concentration by optical means. So gallium arsenide bismuth is MBE stuff, just a national chance is already operating. <laughs> so technology is here and, and we are doing, trying to make system compact and very, very cheap. So uh, MB machine looks like this one, and we have stuff which recognized internationally, and they're producing well, very, very, very nice and very uh, uh, perfect in, in technological point of view uh, structures. So here I'm stopping, and here is totally different uh, uh, track. I'll go to solid state things, and we try to discuss how we can avoid femtoseconds, how to try to play another different game. Once again, uh, the same, and electronically and photonically, and we'll speak about electronic-based sources first. Then we go to quantum cascade lasers, totally different generation of lasers. We'll speak about plasma wave sources. We'll speak about plasma wave detectors as well, uh, and also some words about bolometers. And finally, uh, we'll speak about bowtie diodes, which are our own technology used for security. And finally, about what we can do with on-chip integration and better sensitivity, and finally, we're going to the smaller size in, in, in direct application. So, in fact, uh, we should find the reference, how much or how big or how far we are. So the best reference I'm using is uh, bolometers, helium-based bolometers. They're not convenient, they look like this. But the main problem is, uh, and main issue is numbers. It's QMC, we like this. QMC is a good company producing this. But the main numbers are here, you know? Three terahertz, uh, it's conventional for bolometers. Another one, sensitivity, it's a range. Four kilovolt, uh, at least several kilovolts per watt. It's important number. And NEP, noise equivalent power, it means it, certain kind of power which I have increased above the, above the noise level. So this is pico, pico watts, right? We should remember this, reader hertz, kilovolts per watt, and picowatts in NEP as a reference. So electronic sources. In fact, I like this very interesting paper. It came from GPL, GPL lab from America, and they plotted uh, power as a, uh, as a function of frequency, and the idea is that the sources are based on multiplication of frequency. It means if I have gun diode, right? It's about 100 gigahertz. I try to uh, multiply many times and go like 200, 400, 800, and so on, so on. It means multiplier. 
It, it means f uh, for, for uh, gallium uh, arsenide em emitters, for instance, 100 gigahertz, it means one watt. It means I can multiply many times and as far as can go, still my power is still reasonable. What we have, you see very strange numbers here. It's triple, tri uh, uh, you can double operation or triple operation or, two, uh, or just to combine two and three, it means six times. No other options are reasonable, it causes a lot of technological problems. So what numbers are here? Look, here is one milliwatt is something very important. It was old stuff, 2004. Recent results are for the following. Recently, GPL lab reached 10 microwatts at 2.5 terahertz. Electronic emission, no femtoseconds, only gun emitter and Schottky based uh, multiplier chain. We have here uh, some uh, results which is, uh, has one milliwatt <laughs> around 900 gigahertz, it's huge numbers, and this area is very important for security. We'll see why the post security is, is, is a main issue. So we need very convenient stores in particular for this range. And this is milliwatt is something very, very important. So if we go here, so electronic sources seems to be very, very useful in this kind of operation. It's not convenient, so we should look very small solutions, and as one is quantum cascade lasers. You should know that probably semiconductors, electron hole uh, recombination is a source to emit photon. Quantum cascade lasers are totally different. If you're running downstairs, right, your energy with respect to the ground level goes down and down, and the quantum uh, uh, size is just a height of, 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 of ladder. So uh, if electron can jump over this level, it can emit a certain kind of, 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 of quantum. And usually it's makes by material design. If you look at this quantum design, you see here is something like, like neck, you know, electrons come this level, there is Chirps superlatus, it means miniband is arranged so that electron has no freedom to go somewhere. I mean, freedom is restricted. <laughs> and electron should jump in, this, uh, number, uh, in the level number three, it jump to, to level number two, and then very quickly depopulate this level and then run away through the level one. It means I should arrange lifetimes so that uh, operation should, be, should, should work in this way. And if my vary quantum well widths, I can tune the frequency, it means I have tool to, to make uh, uh, wavelength tuning by technological means. So how it works and, and what the parameters? Currently we have also world records, you know, in this, in this range of operations, everyone fights for these numbers. Currently we have tuning at low temperatures from 1.2 for 0.9 terahertz. Uh, still, low, uh, still low temperature operation. The highest possible temperature currently, it's world record, it's only two th 200 K. No quantum cascade lasers higher. Um, uh, and uh, uh, power here is uh, something 100 microwatts, not far away from one milliwatt. And temperatures requirement are still, still, still uh, no, no chances to avoid. So how it looks like, it's, you know, it's, it's old, very nice picture from Jerome Face Group from, from Switzerland. It emits, you have something like, like uh, application of voltage. It emits in just on, on the edge. And, and uh, world records in this in low temperatures, we have one watt in helium, it's been 10K. If you go to liquid nitrogen, so it's important temperature, we still, not bad numbers in fact. It's 420 uh, milliwatts and it, it, it works nicely, but no temperature, there is no big, no big optimistic uh, uh, forecast in that case and, and, and people try to find a way how to do it. So one of the ideas to make intracavity mixing, if, if I have one laser, let's say one infrared laser, right? In quantum cascade infrared, it's not issue. Uh, quantum cascade in infrared has one or even higher milliwatt emission. If I placed one and another one below, but if inside I try to analyze nonlinear 
environment, let, let's say quantum well with enhanced sky two. It means I can try to mix them because I can tune infrared emission uh, in, the frequency, uh, in the frequency scale. So what they did, I have one quantum cascade laser from the side, I have another one here, and try, uh, and they are infrared lasers. Then I trying to enhance quantum, quantum well with a certain design which have three levels. And, and try to play in these different uh, uh, frequencies, allowing increased uh, chi 2. It means if I have very good lasers here, I can have intra cavity mixing and terahertz emission if our lasers are tuned in, a, as, uh, in frequencies in the frequency, in terahertz frequency range. So, numbers, 4 terahertz, it's, it's 2011, you know, it's old already. 4 terahertz, single mode operation, and uh, 8.5 microwatts, but room temperature. It's step higher. Principle totally new. We can jump in a totally different area, but numbers are still still very weak. So what to do? If you look here, you see it's it's micro it's microwatts. Current scale is terrible in in in, in, in kind of, of of experiment. You need currents are six amps. It's huge. It means I used should use nanosecond pulses in order to avoid heating or not to to, to, to avoid destruction of, of the sample. So two years passed, and what they have did, they reached 2,015 in, 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 in microwatts. It's a huge number because of opt optimizing design and engineering lifetimes. So finally, what they have did, uh, it was uh, two years before they reached 1.5 uh, milliwatts peak power in 3.6 terahertz. A latest world record. It means there is a way we can go and probably the chance to have room temperature operating quantum cascade laser. That's the way. So 1.4 milliwatt is, is a huge number. And, uh, and if, if, of course, it's not a single achievement if we try to use a tunable op tunability option for, for, for spectroscopic imaging, uh, for, for spectroscopy, it's possible to have a meter which frequency is tuned from 2.2 to 4.2 terahertz with a power range in 100 microwatts. It means I can make it slight designed so that applying voltage I have slightly tunable emission which allows me some piece of spectroscopy in particular to this range. Not, you know, it's not below two terahertz, you know. It's, 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 it's in that case frequency is good but uh, main, main signatures of many materials are still in sub terahertz. Of course, another option is let's say uh, hands. You know, you have mobile phones. Hams is, is a transistor which you have everywhere. So an idea is to, to try to run electron in, in, in this direction. And idea is not to, uh, electron speed, you know, it's defined. The two, uh, 10 to 7 cent, uh, centimeters per second. But if I try to excite, if we look at the two-dimensional gas as an environment where acoustic waves can propagate, equivalent of acoustic waves in two-dimensional gas is plasma. So plasma is oscillating, and the speed is one of magnitude higher than electron speed. What we have here, it's possible to tune the wavelengths and to cover from electronic part, let's say from half a terahertz, and to reach maybe even five terahertz. Plasma, wave, plasma waves is totally different mechanism of emission. So uh, equivalence and theory is based on so-called shallow water analogy and uh, shallow water analogy of behavior in ballistic field of end transistors. It's Michael Diakon, Michael Dakno, and Michael Schur paper, 1993. What they said, frequency of such a device is defined mainly by application of VO. VO, uh, it means gate voltage. M is an effective mass in, of material, and L is the distance between source and drain. It means Technologically, I can vary this one, but it should have operation which is tunable by gate voltage. And uh, the conclusion of this interesting theoretical works is tunability by gate voltage. There is no any signatures about temperature. It means it should be temperature insensitive. 
And finally, it is, is uh, depending on the, t on the scheme, uh, this field effect transistor can operate in emission or detection regime. And since it's transistor, it can be integrated everywhere. So it means it could be cheap and very reasonable solution. And finally, how it works in emission? Nothing has happened. It was big hopes, but the main and most beautiful results up today is 2010, unfortunately. <laughs> and the uh, idea was to apply nutrites, because in case you want to have instabilities, you should apply huge voltage. If you're applying huge voltage, right, the uh, transistors are burning usually, and, and, and they're not very reliable. And what is done, it means uh, we should use nutrite, which is very band gap, uh, wide band gap material, Electron density is very high, 10 to 13. It means frequencies should be extended to the uh, higher scale. And what, 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 what people observed is tunability from 0.75 to 2 terahertz, and it's tunable by gate voltage. It's signature of, of, of plasma waves. It is very nice, and if we plot for the two different gates, it means we're still having similar uh, to, to diakonov schur theory, and probably is related with uh, uh, plasma wave emission. So let's summarize. If we put everything on the one plot now, we have plasma waves somewhere here, so we have not so big numbers. Usually, uh, it's very low powers, about picowatts, and for us, it's absolutely not, not interesting. Highest possible value now is close to two microwatts and nothing, nothing more. If you look at the frequency difference quantum cascade lasers, operation scale is somewhere here, and the most optimistic result in frequency scale is 3 terahertz, and we jumped recently 3.6 and 1 milliwatt. Just total picture now. So for security, we need this way, and here is only electronic source. So this is, we need to, to do something with this. Why is this? What you see here is picture taken from Tokyo Post. And you know, we have a lot of flux, big flux of post envelopes every day. So it's people, Japanese people are looking for, the, I read about the security, and they are checking this. X-ray, visible camera, and here is something with, ter with terahertz, you know? We have terahertz unit. So if you look at sucrose with a different grain size, it will be different. If, if we tune the frequency, I can see different images. So frequency, you know, 617 gigahertz. So why we need this? If you look at 300 gigahertz, it means that my source is cheaper, but signal to noise ratio is very low. It means it's not enough from the best point of view. Another one, it means if I go to, to higher frequencies, I have something like in order for me to higher signal to noise ratio, but in addition, I have better resolution. You know, it means optimal things, which is compromised between good price, technology, and application, is still around six gigahertz. So it's Tokyo Post, and here is based on the scattering of, of, electro, of, of terahertz wave, uh, like, like different kinds of materials and, and gray sizes, like, uh, uh, like um, uh, sucrose or caffeine or another one. And if we look uh, finally here, how looks this electronic system? It's our, our system from our lab. It's still big, still big, and needs to be, to be more compact and more convenient. So requirements, 300K uh, uh, frequency range, you know, f below 3 terahertz sensitivity, and NEP should be below, uh, in the range of picowatts. Otherwise, it seems to be not good enough for securities or for direct application. So core optics, you know, if you look here, we'll see optics are still big. It's called parabolic mirrors. Are absolutely inconvenient to work with them because of spot size and tuning and so on. It's idea to avoid totally. So, and finally, for emitters, we need very good powers, uh, tunable frequency range, and the mode quality also becomes very, very important. So nanometric fats once again, and now as the detectors, 
Just we applied the uh, a voltage and looked at the mission, now just opposite task. Just we, illumin we have illumination and we detect voltage which is induced by external illumination. Classical work by Wojtek Knapp group, once they observe here, Fujitsu nanotransistors, which the gate is 250 nanometers, and they observe very nice pi here and very small kink on, 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 on the blue side shoulder. It, the kink was observed as a, uh, and identified as plasma resonance. So in order to prove this, uh, Knapp group just illuminated with a white light to have more carriers. It means they have more and more spikes. And, and this appearance of these oscillations was one of the arguments saying that, in fact, we have uh, effect related with plasma waves. So it's, it's important thing here. And, 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 and if you look at the frequency now, Galum arsenide is 0 0.076, right? In, if I try to reduce this one and to the mass, I can go to higher frequency. And to resolve better is this small spike. So what we did, we choose the material. It's, it's our, our group and, and, and Montpellier group did. They designed new material allowing to reduce this. And design of the structure looks like this. Unfortunately, cannot present for just transition because what we know is only the gate lengths and the materials which is made of. Nothing more. So, Option is, if I have this material, I, we, we, are, we were able to make uh, lengths of 50 nanometers and to, to, to reduce the mass, because it's, it's um, and mass is, is 0 0.042. If we look at the spectrum now, uh, there is plasma resonance. You see very nice uh, appearance with, with the decrease of temperature. We have big spikes somewhere else. It's not so important for us and that kind of, of studies. And finally, we have also this one. But what's also important here, we see nice spikes which are related with 0.8, 2.5, and 3.1 terahertz. We see very nicely pronounced resonant plasma frequencies. It was first observation of direct plasma, uh, plasma waves in such kind of transistors. Everything is fine, but you see temperatures are absolutely in not right scale. They are still 10 to 80. It means below uh, liquid nitrogen. We should go further. And what's nice, they made that CMOS transistors, it's silicon-based, it has very nice properties. Wojtek Knapp, once again, 2011, they published nice work saying that if I try to use silicon transistors, with, with coupled with antenna, I can have very nice results, and I will can have a responsibility, a, a response of the transistor with, with, with the frequencies tuned by gate voltage from 1.5 kilo, kilo uh, volts per watt, and it goes to 100 kilowatts per watt. So. If I have chocolate here and have something metallic inside the chocolate, I can observe it. And the frequency is tunable by this way. Is, it's about one terahertz sensitivity. Maximum sensitivity is kilovolts per watt. And NEP, it's incredible number, 10 picowatts. It's room temperature. From application point of view, it means that I have silicon. I can order somewhere such kind of transistor and can make my own chip without any technological means in my lab. So that is why silicon. So what you should do is, is, is we need broadband antenna or any type of antenna to have effective coupling in the transistor. And 10 picovax is no new, now new world record for any P scale in this kind of, of studies. So how are we doing this one? Let's go for this way. It's our setup now. And we have uh, electronic emitter now. And arguments for this is we'll try to play this game and try to use how much and how good are our sensors and optic solution for security, in particular for security. We'll not follow highest frequencies, but go below to have convenient operation. So. Uh, 
what we're doing here, and, and another one, if we're able to make uh, array, it's possible to have a solution for uh, spatial profile control. It's also very important for imaging quality. So compact optics issue, it means that we have the sensor. I'll show you later how it works. But in a real setup, it looks like this one. We have this is parabolic mirror. Now it's our enemy. It's not a tool as enemy because it's massive and big and then not convenient. And it means we have illumination comes to this side. It means it would be fine to eliminate this, this from, our, from our stuff and to make it compact and, 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 and to make it operation very convenient. So we should replace it somehow. Idea is Fresnel zones. I know, that, I suspect that you know what it is. It, it's old stuff, very old stuff. It, it means that I have something like this. I can make certain kind of circles on the flat area and put and calculate this according to the, my uh, desire in wavelengths. And I have something like this. I should have focusing of, of, of illumination. It means, it seems that mirrors comes away. What is important, the references is you have standards, the substrate, which is usually 500 microns. So if I, do it, uh, if I try to do it, my, my plate should be something like this or something like this, depending on my skills and technology available, that in fact there is no any lenses and only flat optics. It means if I put one piece of optic on the on side of the substrate while putting the detection system on another one, I can have totally integrated system. It's called on-chip integration. Let's do it. Uh, images of our produce, of, 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 of zone plates produced here, and this crosses, it means I try to squeeze my frequency scale to certain frequencies, for instance, 600 giga or 300 giga, that's then which one. It means from one side I have focusing, another one I have filters integrated. It means I have two tasks with one technological solution. If I look here, it's, it's, it's a scale is given uh, for wavelengths. I can look at, 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 at a, a, a technology and look how it behaves, electromagnetic radiation. It's a calculation made by Vincent Tomashunas and Linus Minkavichus. What they're saying it's, it's in, and what they have produced is operation of zone planes in terms range. It's designed, it's a conventional zone plane and convention and zone plane with integrated filters. It's single cross-shaped element. And if we look at, at a technological side, we try to avoid lithography. We're using a direct laser writing technique instead. It's more convenient and more modern for us at least. And, and, and our target is 0.76 terahertz, one of the good lines of optically pumped terahertz laser. What we see here is a nice uh, plot saying that we have very good focusing performance or such kind of plate. <coughs> And experiment, it's, it's experiment, it's, it's points here. We have a peak, which is still um, uh, is broad in frequency scale, but it's, it's, it seems uh, working quite nicely, and we're recording a beam shape with CMOS transistor array. How it works, it means how the properties of the mode, and if we look uh, in, in this, in this in this plot, we have focusing. We should check how it looks like. And the first one, number of zone planes. And another one, how six should be a zone plane itself. So we have five, 15 zones, and five, plus, uh, five zone plus filter integrated. We see that one of the best solutions seems with five zones. Uh, it's, 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 it's one of the optimal solutions. If you look here, there is no big difference or no big effect on thickness of the zone. Because if you try to vary from 24 microns up to 200 microns, no big difference observed in, 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 in relative electric field calculations. If you look at the profile now, it means that there is, there is five zones. You see it's a focusing effect, but some ripples around. 15 zones produces more ripples, but if we have five zones plus integrated filters, we have quite nice uh, mode in, in, in around 0.76 terahertz. So it means five zones integrated uh, with filters is the most optimal solution for mode control. And here is, of course, we have focusing. It's reasonable to place uh, 
the talk talk here and to see how it works. So another, before proceeding to this, how big effect of focal depth. We see nice uh, interference here and, and the scale is, is, is several millimeters. So uh, shorter beam waves with the focal uh, depth is achieved within five millimeters of focal distance plates and, 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 and Fabry Perron's observed due to the standing phase between zone plane and detector. So if we look on chip integration, we're producing a zone plane here, and another part of, of, of substrate, we're producing detector, uh, indium and indium phosphide substrate covered with 200 nanometer thick gold layer, and focal dense is a substrate, 500 microns. So it means if I'm trying to do this, I have compact solution, I have no alignment at all, I have suitable detector array, and ex I can expect increase in sensitivity because more light is focused on, on, on this area. So, uh, good paper, a featured article in electronic letters two years ago. Design is so, on one side is optics, another side is detector, and what we have is ripples. It means if I try to tilt the this, this system with respect to the incident angle, we see a different operation of focusing optic and, and detector itself. And here is sensitivity. It means you have a normal incidence and you have a tilted incidence. It, it is calculation and, 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 and experiment. It means I have in, increase of in, uh, this, the detectivity more at nearly 24, 25 times. Here is an angle of incidence. If I try to detune it, it means uh, I have no focusing effect on, on, on the detector. Mode profile is still kept very nice. That's a way on chip solution for compact terahertz imaging. And so if you look at in more detail scale, just uh, detector looks from on the side, and if you look deeper, we see, we see focusing elements uh, underneath. So, principle, how it works this device, it's, it's you know, bow ties, a gentleman are using this, it's, it's, it's conventional <laughs> for parties, right? But we had broken symmetry of this, de of this uh, device, and idea is just to eliminate all the metallic things and to replace it with, uh, with, with semiconductor part with huge uh, mobility in room temperature. Huge mobility, it means 14,000 uh, instead of you know, 1,000. And idea, idea is if electromagnetic waves come here, electrons are heated slightly on the neck and they run away from the neck inducing DC, DC voltage. I have no BS voltage. It means I could expect something very nice. It works not so bad. I mean, disappointing points as it falls down uh, around 2.5 terahertz. Here is Drew the, uh, Drew the approach, saying that in fact the operation can be improved slightly. But here is antenna cost effects. So what we have here is, is, is still a region a number is 2.5 terahertz, it's very good. But if we look at the scale and sensitivity, sensitivity are still not kilovolts, but the most disappointing is this four nanowatts. It's not still picowatts. So if we try to say that we are so clever and we could do something very amazing, this number is not the right option. We should do something. An idea is to play um, uh, first with spectroscopy. Idea, since frequency is tunable, we can go with, with identification of materials. And the first one, we made certain kind of samples with sucrose with a 10%, tartaric acid 10%. We made the mixture, five plus 5%, and a high density polyethylene as a reference. If we look at the, at the frequencies and absorption spectra, we see nice signatures specific to every, every of, of, of this material. And here is uh, laser lines, what we have in our lab. We try to, to make separate images and different frequencies to record, in fact, images or colored pictures at different uh, ranges of invisible light. So it looks like this. It means if I have different components in, 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 in this uh, 
samples, I see different transmission. This is one is 0 0.7, 0 0.76 terahertz. Here is 2.25 terahertz. You see the difference. If we ap apply principal component analysis and can see how big is distribution and which kind of materials are inside. In fact, I can see which is inside of, 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 of plastically packed materials. So it's different plots saying in the potential scale something like uh, one percent, you know, we have only five percent of mixtures, mean uh, below ten percent in, in total. So it means sensitivity is still good. So it's on point. It means for frequency is very fine. For 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 a good operation, not so good. And so idea was to make special kind of coupling uh, ideas. And the first one to integrate uh, bow tie diet into specific kind of antennas. Antennas are just metallic strips. Uh, the same indium uh, gallium arsenide structure with good mobility, the same uh, uh, substrate with thickness of 500 micro, micro, microns, optical lithography and wetting uh, solution, and here is nice how it looks, um, uh, arrays and, and detectors. And here is an interesting uh, plot saying that since my NEP is still not good, we try to play with heterodyning. We try, I try to mix two frequencies in my diet and to record uh, them in, in, in frequencies. So it allows us to decrease a, a, a noise floor for orders of magnitude. And if you look once again, this one, most important things is 230 femtowatts in NEP. It means I want four orders of magnitude in reducing my noise. Level. Heterodynamic is coherent detection, not, not incoherent. So it means I have also a phase information. Sensitivity, you know, in direct mode is six and four nanowatts. In, in uh, coherent modes and heterodynamic modes, I have 230 femtowatts. It's exciting results, and the first what Linus made in Frankfurt is they put some medical things inside the envelope, a record, uh, different um, images. Here is direct, um, here is heterodyning, you see bet much better resolution, and there is the face information which comes from heterodyning. Of course, the most thing is to repeat Zang experiments with a leaf. You know, I showed in previous. And here, we, he took a leaf from the street and put in the envelope. And what he observed is nice signatures with using electronic mode, not femtosecond mode. So here is direct scheme. You know, its numbers are just dB, 30 dB. We have 40 dB in the dining, but you know, leaf is transparent. It means even in transparent material, I still had very good resolution. And here is a phase information. It allows you to see optical height of your transparent leaf. That is amazing. Of course, it's not so exciting. We need a reflection mode, and what is important was just, and, no, it's for comparison, you know. It's, I always think that our quality is not less than, than the classical plot. But the most important is reflection, and the most suitable things to have coin, right? And Lithuanian coin is so beautiful, and we record this. You see very, very disturbed modern art because of wavelength is comparable to the height of, of, of this coin. And here it seems for us very nice. And that is why we jumped on the APL cover. It's, it was it was, was a big honor, and we calling it now memorial to litters because they have no any more Lithuanian currency. So, what what further? And another point is goes to how we can play with silicon. Uh, silicon is so attractive, and nanofats could be a good option. And what we have in our lab is is, is CO2 uh, pumped uh, terahertz laser. It means instead of tunability at broadband operation, we have selective frequencies extending up to seven terahertz. So in fact, we have many lines. It means we have something like this, different ki uh, kind of lines which were acceptable in our lab. So what we'll do, we'll say we'll have no tunability. We'll go to these frequencies with a specific kind of antennas exactly fit to these frequencies. It means I'm losing tunability, but trying to get with, with sensitivity instead. So design is two transistors with virtual ground, and here is a patch antennas to have more coupling efficiency. 
What's the result? Uh, I'm repeating the slides, you know, it was bow tie with broadband, you know, and they used this one with a single frequency. What we're doing, many colors with different frequencies, but no tunability. So what we have, our paper uh, saying that this kind of design, we have a chip, several kind of transistors detects only one color, but not all. Like in CCD camera, you know, every, every piece of chip records different colors. What we see here is a frequency scale, and we have operation, you know, nine terahertz, it's world record in, in, in silicon transistors. We recorded it together with Frankfurt Group. This is what unique absolutely, it's made in three labs. One is, is electronic sources in Vilnius and Frankfurt. This is, is, is optically pumped lasers is in Vilnius. Another one, this is free, uh, free electron laser recorded in, in, in Dresden. It means strange experiments. One of the most powerful sources in terahertz are recorded by one of the most most sensitive uh, detectors uh, uh, available currently in, 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 in this time. So, of course, one of you viewers asked it, why are you doing so strange? Most powerful laser with most sensitive detectors. What we need is we need tunability and the limit of, of uh, plasma operation. So what we're doing here, we're trying to make photos here and to see, uh, we, we can make cuttings and to see how it looks uh, uh, photos in different uh, frequencies. The result is, is our paper, uh, 2014, what we, the same uh, samples which we used for bow ties, we have something, NEP, you know, NEP, it's not bad, it's, 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 it's below 100 picowatts and, and lower frequencies are still lower. And what we have, we are making colors uh, in this scale and the result is the following. It's, OPPO, it's for comparison coming from this one, it's transmission mode. If we go to a reflection mode, you see it's nothing happens. No, it's difficult to observe something different varying the frequency, it means recognition in reflection modes is still not good. But if we look at the photo colors using 30 nanometer CMOS technology, uh, pictures looks pretty well, and we have a reference, it's, it's high density polyethylene, and here we have sucrose variation of, of, of content of material. It means I'm not using spectral measurement, I'm making only imaging. It means scattering is avoided, and if my computer knows a priori spectra, I still can ha say that this material is dangerous or not dangerous. It's quite enough for securities, because if you jump into the security area, nobody cares about human rights and so on. Obviously, taken away, I go to the lab to identify what it is. So, if you look for materials, gallium arsenide, how good is gallium arsenide? It's the first classical plot made by Frankfurt and Montpellier groups. Uh, first image using the same Fujitsu transistors, which is a jewel from Dominique, uh, which was, was in the lab, it was taken away and put in the envelope and were recorded. It was very nice. Uh, and here is a reflection mode. The key was, was uh, the element uh, 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 used for reflection mode. It's clearly why, because metal is very, very nice for in reflection experiment. Here is courtesy from, from uh, Roscoe's group. I just got it two days before. I was looking for nut rights images. <laughs> Nothing is available at currently, and it's unpublished data now. Uh, you see the, the shoes, right? And the motivation of the study is very simple. When you're going to the airport, you usually taking shoes away because somebody's, maybe something you have. So in Germany, it's accepted that it's a restriction of human rights. So the idea is to use star heads uh, and to scan shoes, and it's something dangerous. In fact, study was done up to 300 giga and plotting only one, 150. Problem is, you see, it's top view here, and here is from profile view, nothing happens. If something is put, put in like dielectric stuff, I don't know how, how, how we can resolve it. Problem is, that all the stuff absorbing hugely. And if you go six gigahertz, nothing happens in principle. Nobody knows why that is why probably paper is still not published. But in fact, it's a big activity in this, in this area because airports, in particular, in Europe it requires this. It means group are having this technology can earn good grants and can have good funding and say, okay, I'll have something very important. 
if something appears, I will announce. <laughs> so finally, microbolometers. It's, it was something very, very interesting in uh, recent years. Uh, Francois Simon uh, from, from Grenoble announced a very nice paper. He was able to record all femtosecond lasers uh, emission, and it was emissions, spot size was something like this. And what they say, they have sensitivity, which is megawatts, and the bolometers one is from, from amorphous silicon. It was Grenoble approach. Our approach was, uh, we worked with Slo 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 Slovenia group. We say, okay, it's probably they are very good, but we go with, 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 with titanium because of many properties, uh, and one of them is good thermal conductivity, and what we have produced is array, linear array of, of barometers operating room temperature, and it looks like this one. You see optic, here is a recording system, so how it works. If you look further, we have very nice uh, antenna gain, and we see it's selective filtering, you know, around 300 gigahertz to have very good, good results. And here we see mode control, 300 giga and 600 giga. It means not, no optics, but good control of mode. And finally, of course, the same experiment with the same stuff, what we made already with bow ties and fats, the same uh, uh, material studies using for lactic acid or tartaric acid. It's just, bolometers are still good in, in, in this area, but one of the issues which still remains is the reability. It means static charges that comes from your fingers can destroy pixel. It means I can lose quality of image. And photomixer, which is Toptica photomixer, which Dalius made experiments, you know, just one um, microwatt coming from this one, and we're able to control mode profile of very weak uh, radiation, which is still below one microwatt. Here is something like mode profile, and here is how it looks like spot size. So it, it seems that bolometers can be a very, very good tool for, for in alignment of, of, of all uh, terahertz stuff. And here is something like mode profiles and so on, so on. So quality seems not so bad and, and should be, uh, and an idea is to see weak terahertz emission without focusing optics. And finally, any P in vacuum options is five picowatts, one of the highest value ever be obtained in, 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 in such kind of, of equipment. Finally, before conclusions, astonishing approach was still amazing. I mean, it's a lot of stuff are done to have good results, but it seems that a way that nothing needs to be done. That is why it's astonishing. Why? <laughs> In fact, Quinn Hu Group from MIT 10 years ago published a very interesting paper that says saying that nothing we need to do with terahertz detection. They bought camera, which is available, commercially available. It's coming from Cold War times for night vision. And you know, this camera is, it's real time camera for night vision. And it, it's produced one of the private companies in America and, for it, and oriented to the transparent uh, atmospheric window. What they have is ballon, it's, it's vanadium oxide. They have special kind of filter. What they have did, they removed filter from the top. Nothing else. And they, of course, they put QCL with 50 milliwatts at 3 and 4.3 terahertz, and finally it was 33 Kelvin. What they have did, they try to record image. It's first, they tried, they took a pencil and wrote MIT, right, in, in the inside of, of the envelope. They were able to see what's, what was going on because this pencil is, you know, graphite, it's metallic stuff, it's very easy to record. And here is fingerprints, you know, it's even in reflection mode, it's still visible, which is fantastic, right? <laughs> and finally, what they did, they tried to look at the envelope and to run this. It's real-time imaging without any efforts, commercially available efforts, you know? <laughs> Why do you, people are doing so many years such a strange stuff? So, amazing experiment, but every, you know, the stuff is that you need 50 milliwatts for that. QCL is 50 milliwatts is still needed. Finally, we have two boxes. One is 
emitters, another one is detectors. If we try to look at the scales, what we have as summary, uh, in the frequency scale and, and power scale and material scale, we have something like securities, we have limits of operation, and we have uh, limits in, in red side, 1.2. Gallium natride, by the way, quantum cascade lasers are this invented last year, an operation of five terahertz. And if and the plasma waves are still operating below two terahertz, if you look at, at plasma waves, we have something like this one. And if we try to manage this terahertz imaging system, it seems that electronic emitters are most universal thing for main possible uh, detection systems. Quantum cascades is quite well with bicolomerometers and wave sensors, but with the bow ties a little bit complicated because of different frequency range, while plasma wave emitters still an issue and nothing happened within five years. No good numbers, no direct application, no uh, suitable about uh, even spontaneous emission without no, not so nice uh, numbers. So finally, terahertz evolving to towards compact optics. We have nice colors in spectroscopic terahertz imaging. And also we have mm, possibility to record very weak optoelectronic emission. And we can see also color photography in terahertz frequencies. We published recently in newsroom. And that is all that I want to say to you today. Thank you very much. Good question. <laughs> yeah, good question. Uh, I, I not mention. I mean, uh, you need um, recent numbers, single pixel and, and erase. Different story. You know, it, it means it means I have a scan. It means uh, half of uh, half a minute or or depending on on, on integration time. It, it, it's at what what we have. If we have uh, array, let's say uh, twelve to twelve or it's, or, or two hundred for fifty five to fifty five, it means half a minute anyway you need for this. You can make also a real time. I have one movie if you want, I can show you. It works slow. It means you need good powers because usually uh, power it means, you know, when you have scanner, it means at least one milliwatt because your optical dense, power density of optical beam becomes very weak if you try to record, let's say, five centimeters of, of envelope. You know, it means if we have less than one milliwatt, no chance to do something very <laughs> good. Uh, a linear array becomes possible. A real time, you know, uh, uh, the price we're paying for this is 50 milliwatts in good power. Just that's, a, that's an idea. Frequency scale, you need at least below six, 600 giga. No big sense to go to one terahertz. 300 giga is good powers, but resolution's weak. Uh, you mean this real time? Re real time? You mean this? Yeah, real time is absolutely strange because you know they for infrared. You know what they had? They made just it's, it's night vision camera. It's real time night vision camera. They remove filtering. It means because filter is covered. You know, no, it's not transmitted for terahertz. So we, they did nothing except removing filter. It's infrared. You know, it's infrared. That's the point. And this is bolometer, you know. Uh, for, for for bolometer, it's is 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 uh, you know. For bolometer, you need only only change of, of, of resistance. It doesn't matter which which frequency it comes. So they use this simply simply this this, this game. Yeah. Just good good results because of good QCL. <laughs> <laughs>